Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, David. Um, I have no slides, which is, uh, which, is unru which is rare for me. I have one video at the end, but no slides. Uh, so look, it's a privilege, it's a real privilege for me to be uh, uh, here on this stage today. Uh, as someone who absolutely loves television, uh, I'm sitting in a room filled with people who have contributed to the creation of some of the most compelling, original, and enriching television that I think the UK has, has ever seen. As you'd expect, uh, I'm incredibly proud of what Sky has done, our contribution to making this the golden age of television. From the way our journalists at Sky News provide impartial, fact-based, and in-depth coverage of today's news stories in an age blighted by fake news, to the constant innovation and ever-expanding coverage from Sky Sports, which, despite the cries of the death of live linear television, saw audiences grow by 15% last year, to the agenda-setting, multi-award-winning Sky Original dramas like Chernobyl. And in 2020, we will bring 80, 80 Sky Original dramas, comedies, and entertainment shows to our customers' screens. That's an increase of 25% on what we delivered last year. Our customers can look forward to shows like Punch Drunk Theatre's first TV production, The Third Man with Jude Law, yet another Sky and HBO production, to the second series of Sky Germany original series and my personal favorite, Dust Boat, or a new satire based on what we really think it's like to be parents today uh, in a show called Breeders with Martin Freeman. Not only are we creating more than ever before, but we're making it even easier and an even richer experience for our customers. For example, in less than six months, we'll have launched five new discrete categories and genres, and we've created five new channels to go along with that, as well as comprehensive on-demand libraries to aid customer navigation. We've already launched Sky Crime and Sky Comedy, and we have Sky Nature, Sky Documentaries, and Sky History coming over the next month. And I'm pleased to say that our plans have really, really paid off. Take Sky Crime, our first launch at the end of last year, where we now regularly deliver audiences that are three times higher than the record audiences ever recorded for true crime dramas on pay TV. And I'm really pl pleased that in the future, a lot of our content will be produced on our new 30-acre Sky Studios campus uh, that we're building in Elstree. With 12 sound stages, only in stage one of the development, we expect to generate an additional three billion pounds of production investment in the UK's creative economy over the first five years. Of course, it's moments like these when we reflect on the performance of, our, of, of the business that you realize just how far Sky has come. Now, when Sky launched, of course, we were solely a satellite broadcaster delivering a reasonably narrow set of channels. Today, of course, we're Europe's biggest direct-to-consumer media company, producing content in every genre, genre and delivering it and distributing it over every media. We've built our own streaming platform, Now TV, that now underpins NBC's launch of Peacock in the US. Over the last handful of years, we've grown to over a million Sky Mobile customers, and our broadband network is constantly um, being expanded, and our service invested in as we continue to grow our subscribers. We have a thriving business across seven European countries. We serve over 24 million customers, and we have 32,000 people working in our business. And of course, as David mentioned, we're now part of Comcast, one of the world's greatest media and technology companies. Now, of course, we're just one part of this rich media landscape, and we just keep changing. But as we keep changing, the rest of the landscape changes with us too. And of course, at the very heart of this change it is, as we know, the customer, or in some cases, the viewer. But what is staggering at the moment is the speed at which this is happening. What our customers want, how they want it, when they want it, and where they want it, is going through an ever-rapid metamorphosis. Now, we believe that given the speed, breadth, and depth of this transformation, no single market player 
regardless of size or position or resources, can adapt fast enough. Additionally, we believe it's wrong for any one player to take a winner-takes-all mentality. Simply, in our view, no matter how good any of us in this room or beyond are, it's impossible to monopolize the breadth of creativity that our customers and viewers crave from what we as an industry collectively produce. So what's becoming abundantly clear is that in this accelerated and profound change in customer demand, we are creating new imperatives that require us as an industry to think very, very differently. To break from the past, to overcome our prejudice and our muscle memory, and to think afresh about he, how we all succeed in this next phase of our growth. So I want to talk about three of these initiatives, sorry, three of these imperatives, which I think will make a difference to all of us, the industry, and to those we serve, our customers, viewers, and our communities. So first I'd like to pick up on a theme that Karen mentioned, which is about partnerships. Now, of course, we all need to work with others and compete with others. Second, I'd like to talk about the need to modernize the underlying regulation in our industry. And third, I'd like to talk about the need for us all to better reflect the communities that we serve. So let me start with the first of these, partnerships. So I'm not the only person in this room who can talk about the way that their business is producing some of the greatest content that is ever created. At the BBC, it ranges from genre-bending dramas like Killing Eve to the global phenomenon that is Strictly. Netflix isn't just streaming box sets, it's winning Oscars. And HBO, you, you can't tell me anybody in this room didn't break out the popcorn during the last season of Game of Thrones. So it's clear that the golden age of television isn't just hype. The choice of quality content is amazing news for viewers and customers. But of course, this abundance creates new sets of problems. When Sky was formed, there was, very, there was precious little choice about what to watch. Now, arguably, there is almost too much. And even worse, the viewer has seen an incredible fragmentation of places to see it. Customers tell us, and we feel that ourselves, that it's not only confusing, that it's not only confusing trying to find something to watch in the avalanche of content available, it's even harder to know which platform or app has the rights to which films, to which shows, or to which live sports. Whether you subscribe to the paradox of choice or Burden's principle, when we all ask viewers to do too much, to wait through too many options, we risk that in the end, they simply just opt out because it's simply too difficult. Data on Netflix itself suggests that if you spend over 90 seconds uh, browsing, the viewer decides to opt out to do something different, like play with their phone or switch to a different activity. So the threat of them leaving increases dramatically. So at the same time as we have been divided, so at the same time as Sky, we've dived into creating some of the greatest of a content, we've also stepped into, we've also stepped up our game when it comes to aggregation and navigation. On the aggregation side, this clearly means partnerships. Because our clear focus is on making it easy for our customers to find what they want to watch. Netflix, for example, often billed as one of our biggest competitors, is happily integrated into SkyQ because we're committed to making sure that our customers can find the content that they want, irrespective of the source. Now, yesterday, some of you would have seen that we added Netflix into our basic package. So it now comes as standard when you buy Sky. Two weeks ago, we launched a new package with Sky Sports and BC Sport in a single subscription. And you'll find them both happily together in the sports section of our guide. We have other partnerships too, of course, with HBO, with NBC, and of course now, as we announced a couple of days ago, with Disney, as well, of course, with many, many others. And we also have them in technology, with the BBC, with Virgin Media, and many others. And we have advertising partnerships too, including with Channel 4, through innovative ad smart technology. We also have partnerships in content sharing, where with Channel 4, for instance, we've shared rights, experimented with box set releases, and tried new windows. 
It's true to say that despite some of the noise around prominence, that you're just as likely to find something promoted from the BBC as you are Sky Atlantic, from ITV as you are Sky One, from Netflix as you are Sky Comedy, from BT Sport as you are Sky Sports, and from YouTube as you are a podcast from Spotify. Because in the end, Sky as a platform only succeeds if it keeps its customers happy and makes it effortless for its customers to find what they love. Now, it's because we love content as both a platform and a broadcaster that we understand how to do this. That is why, alongside investing in, keeping, in making great content, we keep investing heavily in technology. This was at the very heart of our mission when we created SkyQ. We're incredibly proud to have designed and built what we believe is one of the best products of its kind anywhere in the world, right here in the UK. We employed thousands of engineers, software engineers, to develop and evolve it, and thousands of installers to get it into our customers' homes and set it up. And four years ago, almost to the week, after its launch, we have over 50% of our customers, UK customers, using it. And we know our customers love it. Customers with Q watch more TV and have higher satisfaction than we ever achieved with Sky Plus. So our mission to put everything in one place and make it easy is really paying off. We believe that making all content that you love easy to find at the touch of a button, or even with your voice, all in one place on a single monthly subscription in a world where customers face ever more complication and fragmentation of choice is a recipe for long-term success. Now, in my view, working together to make it even easier for customers and viewers to find and enjoy their favorite channels and their favorite content is how we're all going to succeed, both individually and collectively. And the truth is that only by doing so will we as an industry deliver on better serving our audiences and our customers. Which brings me to my second theme, the need to modernize our underlying regulation. Now, there are a number of areas across our industry where it seems regulation has found it very hard to keep pace with a rapidly changing market. Let's start with public service broadcasting. This country is beginning a major debate about the future of public service broadcasting, rightly so. It's probably never been more important than at this juncture, given the same forces that are at play, the fast-changing consumer behavior driven by fast-changing competitive marketplace. Public broadcasting is, of course, still vitally important to us and our nation. Not only because the average person still watches around five hours of TV a day, a large proportion of which goes to the PSBs, but because broadcasters holding a PSB license are required to, and I quote, deliver impartial, trusted news, UK-originated programs, and distinctive content. The ultimate aim being, as Ofcom wrote, in its public service broadcasting in a digital age report to deliver high quality television that is able to reflect the UK back to itself. I'd like to touch just on a few of these. Let's start with the PSBs needing to deliver impartial and trusted news. And let me talk about Sky News. Sky News is widely available and provides impartial news to over 100 million viewers across Europe. According to Ofcom's own research, it competes with, and even leads, the terrestrial UK broadcast news operations, including the traditional PSBs, on trust, on quality, and on partiality. Sky News was recognized during the Sky Acquisition saga as the cornerstone of broadcast news plurality in the UK. And it has guaranteed funding, and it has guaranteed independence. For us, it feels and looks like what we are delivering today is something very much in the service of the public without any obligation to do so. But we'd like to do more. The launch of NBC Sky World News will give Sky News access to even greater international gathering resources, and we'd like to do more locally as well. Regional news, we believe, is hugely important segment of the UK news market. As local published media has collapsed, the importance of video news increases. We also believe that there has been a real lack of innovation in this area. Holding a, public service, holding a public service license is a privilege. And we believe with privilege comes a deep responsibility to provide, ahead of any commercial interests, 
the delivery of what it was envisioned that license holder would have to do in the first instance. We believe that more can be done in the PSB review to make provision of regional news more innovative, more high quality, and more multi-platform. New models, perhaps, that enable everyone, Sky News included, to participate in delivering better, impartial, trusted news across our nations and regions. The same could be said, of course, about contributing to UK-originated programs and distinctive content. I've already earlier highlighted our commitment to scaling our UK production with 80 originals this year alone, which will, go further, which will grow further over the coming years as Sky Studios Elstree scales. This, will include, this year will include very British productions, Brassic, Breeders, Gangs of London, I Hate Susie, Cobra, Save Me Two, Britannia, the list goes on. And as far as distinctive goes, even if you look beyond Sky Arts, which is still the UK's only dedicated arts channel, Chernobyl, Das Boat, Zero Zero Zero, The New Pope, all introduce audiences to distinctive stories from beyond our borders. Point being, our definition of the role and therefore the specific responsibilities of a public service broadcaster in a future age needs to change as Sky and many others contribute more fully to providing the delivery of impartial and trusted news, UK originated programs and distinctive content. Next, I'd like to turn to the debate of leveling the field between online and offline. I'd like to start with something which is close to my heart which is the duty to protect our children. At Sky, we've invested heavily to create a safer environment for our customers' children. The Parents' Guide on SkyQ, creating partnership with Common Sense Media, provides in-depth ratings to over 3,500 movies and TV shows and helps give families the really deep details they need to make informed choices before they view. With Sky Kids Safe Mode on SkyQ, Parents can lock SkyQ in the kids' section using their PIN, keeping kids in a safe space. You don't have to hold a PSB license to produce a kids' app. Sky Kids is a dedicated streaming service where kids can watch their favorite shows and play games in a child-friendly and, importantly, safe environment. And, of course, we have the watershed and PIN protection at any other time. And over, above that, over and above all that, we have clear rules and regulations with respect to advertising as to what is acceptable and what is not. And what happens if we go beyond TV? Well, we take the same as approach as far as we can when it comes to our broadband service. Sky Broadband Buddy is an exclusive app that helps protect kids from seeing things online that they shouldn't, regardless of the device that they use at home. Sky Broadband Shield is, free to, is a free tool that allows users, our customers, to filter websites that are seen in the home and protects them against malware, phishing, and infected sites from across the internet and across all their devices. Now, these are all fantastic things for our customers, and we're really proud to do them. But in reality, they really shouldn't have to exist at all. These tools exist because there are huge swathes of media consumption and activity now taking place beyond the borders of regulation, and we have stepped in to address that. The fact that Ofcom cannot mandate something as simple as pin protection for children on giant streaming services used more habitually by children, as they would say, a broadcaster, highlights the, the size of the gap that exists. Furthermore, a Christmas ad from a high street retailer that cannot run on ITV but can, on, but can run online denies, engage, denies a UK broadcaster the precious funding it needs to invest back into the UK economy. Now, we understand these are all complex issues, and we welcome, of course, the government's first step towards regulating um, to increase accountability among companies that publish content which causes harm online. And we believe that in a world of converged platform media, regulation needs to follow suit and evolve too. And we look forward to continuing to work with the government and the industry to find practical and robust ways to turn that into reality. Now, lastly, I'd like to talk about my third and final area, which is about us all taking a greater lead in reflecting our communities. Now, we live in a country with around one in five people that are not white British. Too rarely does this group see people like them on TV, particularly in lead roles where their ethnicity is incidental to their character. 
For us, the start was setting a target of 20% BAME representation on screen and off at our entertainment channels. And we're making progress, beating the target in some areas, but short in others. We're 11 points ahead of target of on screen and have BAM, BAME representation in a senior role in every Sky Commission show. We did this because we thought it was the right thing to do, to reflect our customers, our employees, and our modern society. But beyond that, we just think it's good business. There is clear empirical evidence from McKinsey, from Harvard, from Forbes, that companies with a more diverse, diverse work, workforce and agenda perform better over the long term. And for those of us who have lived it, we know it to be true. As a whole, our industry has a long way to go, and we're all learning how to make changes that we need. But we need to do it, particularly because we're the most visible industry in our society. Our commissioning decisions, who we cast, and how we encourage stories to be told is a responsibility that none of us should fail. If the mission is to deliver high quality television that is able to reflect the UK back at itself, and if we know our viewers crave UK originated and distinctive content, then surely doing this is the shortest of shortcuts to deliver on that pledge to this country. So in conclusion, I believe that only through building partnerships across our industry will we best be able to meet customers' rapidly changing de demands and needs. That not only by embracing the idea that we have to collaborate to deliver ambitions, will we succeed. We believe that in a modern media economy, you don't have to hold a public service broadcasting license to be in service of the public. We also believe that modernization of the rules that regulate the UK broadcasting and communication sector need to rebalance the playing field with the largest companies that have ever existed in history. Finally, we believe that we should do more individually to reflect our communities. Not only because it's good business, but because no other industry has an opportunity to make more of an impact in the changing minds than we do. Britain has a proud history of creating some of the best film, TV, and music in the world. I'd like to believe that by embracing all of these ideas, we can all go on celebrating the golden age of TV, because we have together safeguarded the benefits of society, of everything television can offer. Now then, by giving you just a quick look at some of Sky's best content from 2020, which of course, I'm proud to say, our customers will find all in one place and easy. Thank you. One, two, three, four. Listen up. Yeah, we are. Where are you? You better be listening now. You better be listening now. Everything <laughs> is fine. Everything stops. We got platinum, we got gold. Our name in the envelope. One more with a cherry on the top. This is now a national emergency. Blowing anything up. When do we ever blow anything up? These violent delights have violent ends. Do you see how strange this is? I haven't even gotten to the strange part. That would be good. So hot, not trying to brag. We got that rise at that size. Let's light it up like dynamite. Yes. I'm just getting started. Match it. That's what we do. Wow. Great. Um, well, we're, we're, we are running a little bit late, but we've got time for, for a couple of questions and then we're going to go to the, go to the break. Um, mentioned at the beginning Comcast. I mean, a, a year or so in, um, what influence are they having on your sort of day-to-day -day running of the organization here in Europe? Look, I think we're, sh we're sharing a lot, um, clearly. Uh, I think they've been very supportive of us, uh, as I said from the, at the outset. Uh, they've continued to invest heavily in us. Sky Studios Austria is a great example of that. Um, but it's been two-way. So 
Now TV, I mentioned our streaming platform they're using for the launch of Peacock in the US, very big deal for them. Uh, we've shared um, technology in our set-up box, of course. Uh, we've worked together on Sky News uh, and NBC News launching a world service. Uh, and we work together on collaborating on production of, of some sporting events. So you know, the two organizations have come together incredibly well and we've, we've traded quite a lot of, of expertise and learnings. Great. Uh, you mentioned uh, the PSB review, um, obviously, and um, uh, rightly pointed to those things that have public value that Sky uh, has done for many years. Um, in a sense, what, what, what was the implication of, of your remarks in terms of, in a sense, what could be done by the PSBs and for the PSBs uh, in this forthcoming review? Because you left it slightly hanging, I thought, in terms of sort of what, what needs to change. I, I, think that, I think, look, the headline is the world is changing very rapidly. There are more people contributing to the sector in more meaningful ways than ever before. The, the PSBs and what was originally envisioned, uh, I think, just needs a rethink. Um, the, the role is very important, and none of us underestimate that, or none of us, you know, we particularly, and in, in my speech, I stress the importance of, of the role they play in our country. You know, but there are two, there are two thoughts. Number one is, uh, it's important that we take a broader view, that with the vista is broader, it's not just incumbent on the PSBs to produce, you know, UK originated and distinctive content or, you know, impartial news. There are others who can do that, who can do that effectively. And if that is true, then the underlying construct of, 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 of what was envisioned in the first place needs to, needs to evolve and adapt to, to a modern world. And the second is, my other point, is partnerships. Um, you know, I've, I've often said, and I think I've been on this stage in previous years, saying you know, that we can be a great partner to the PSBs and the PSBs can be a great partner to us, but that is a two-way street. Mm. Uh, and in my view, and again, as I mentioned in, in, in my speech, I, I think the idea that there's this deep muscle memory about how we compete and how we I think that's got to change. I think that the, the imperative is that working together and collaborating now more than ever before is important to serve our viewers and to serve our customers. So will, will you, are you not supportive of the PSP's position on prominence, for example? I think we do a very good job today of making all the content on our platform prominent. Um, and I think the debate is not, I think the debate needs to move on from whether Sky or others in our specific, specific narrow sector are doing all they can to, to, uh, to, to promote prominence and look well beyond that. There are streaming platforms, there are smart TVs, there are many other forms in which customers are consuming and the debate probably should center on that. But I think we're doing more than enough today to highlight uh, the great, uh, the great, um, you know, the great entertainment, the great content, the great services that the PSPs produce. Steve, I think we could go on for quite a bit. We're running a little bit behind. It was a very uh, clear and, and powerful presentation. Thank you very much for being Thank with you. us at the conference today. Thank you. Thank you.